Without them, you sure would have a hard time getting supplies and materials on and off the rig. The crane is your link with the rest of the world. Sure, you've got helicopters that are faster, but they're designed for people and urgent supplies. The cranes handle all the big loads. That goes for moving stuff around the rig as well. Every joint of drill pipe that goes down hole is handled by the cranes at one time or another. All of Setco's offshore units have two cranes or more, even the jackups. The MSV Theris and Phillips SS both have larger Clyde cranes that are rated up to 350 tons. They're used to do the really big jobs. All cranes are operated pretty much the same way. We'll be concentrating on the National OS 435 in this program, since that's what we have more of. This program is part three in a four-part series. We hope you've seen the first two shows by now on crane hand signals and slinging loads. If you haven't recently, go back and watch them again. After you watch this show, you can watch the one on crane maintenance. It rounds out this series on cranes. We don't intend to make you an expert operator in this show. Just get you started. When your barge engineer feels you're ready, he'll assign you to an experienced operator on your rig. That will be your chance to get at the controls. Don't try it yourself on a slow night. By now, you should know the basic exterior parts of the crane. Here's a review. The crane itself sits on a base or pedestal, which is attached to the deck. It has the ability to swing 360 degrees by use of a swing bearing or roller path. The operator's cab is in the front. The engine or prime mover is in the back. The boom usually has three sections, a base section, one or more middle sections, and a boom tip extension. The boom is anchored to the crane by a foot pin. The gantry, or A-frame, supports the boom with the help of wire lines, floating blocks, and pendant lines. These boom stops prevent the boom from lifting too high. The main hoist line and the whip hoist line run through shivs in the boom to their appropriate blocks and hooks. The main line usually uses a multi-line hook block for heavy loads, while the whip line uses a single-line ball hook for lighter loads. Here comes the ball hook now. Oh, yeah. As Sam here just found out, it's also known as a headache ball by some of our more experienced people. An offshore pedestal crane has three basic functions. Lifting the boom up and down, hoisting and lowering the hooks, and turning sometimes as much as 360 degrees. All this movement is done by the operator from the controls in the cab. Let's go on inside and take a look at the controls and what they do. Most crane cabs have room for just one person. When you sit in the chair, one of the first things you'll notice is all the windows. This is so you can see as much of the rig as possible. You need to be able to see the load you're picking up, where it'll be going, as well as everything in between. You'll want to keep those windows clean and check the wipers every so often so the rain doesn't catch you off guard. The cab controls usually will be laid out like this. The lower right panel contains your hydraulic gauges, engine start, and speed selector switches. The left and right hand panels contain the most used operating and indicating controls. The foot pedals are for the throttle and brakes. In the middle of your console is the load radius indicating unit. Most cranes also contain two-way radios or a PA system so you can keep in communication with the control room, the supply boats, and your roustabouts. Let's take a closer look at the controls and what they do. We'll start up on the left-hand side. 
At the very top is the emergency brake set. You push it to immediately engage all hoisting brakes, including the boom brake. Pull it out to reset it. Right below it are five indicator lamps. The first two for hydraulic level. The red means refill. The other three lights are for fuel level, green is full, yellow is low, red means refill at once. Below the lights are three gauges, the top left for water temperature, the right one for oil pressure, the engine tachometer or RPM gauge is in the middle. Below the tack are two brake off lights. They go on when the brake is off. The one on the left for the swing brake, the one on the right for the boom hoist brake. The switch below the light on the left sets the swing brake. The push button on the right is the horn. Use it to get someone's attention or to tell a crew member to get out of the way. The control lever on the left is for swinging or turning the crane. Pulling it back swings you left. Pushing it forward swings you right. Next to it is the boom hoist control. To hoist the boom, pull the handle toward you. To lower it, push it away from you. The left foot pedal duplicates this control. By the way, you'll be using this foot pedal most of the time. When this control is in the neutral or middle position, the brake is automatically applied. In the middle of the cab is the weight and angle indicator, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Now let's look at the right-hand controls. At the top is the load chart, which we'll explain later. Under it is the emergency load release button. It'll release all your load. However, the foot brake will still control the load. Be advised that this control is for emergency use only. For example, if the hook gets caught on a work boat, don't use it indiscriminately. The two indicator lights are for the brakes. The one on the left indicates main hoist brake off. The one on the right tells you your whip hoist brake is off. Below the lights are the main and whip hoist selector switch. You use it to select either the main or whip line for your load. Once the switch is set, Use your control handle to move the load. To reel line in or hoist, pull the handle toward you. To let line out or lower, push it away from you. As with the boom hoist control, when the lever is in the middle position, the brake is automatically applied. Back down on the foot controls, just right of center is the brake pedal. On the far right is the throttle. On the lower right panel are hydraulic operating pressure gauges. The first is for the main and whip line. The next for the boom hoist. The third for the swing gear. The last gauge is for hydraulic control pressure. These gauges have marks on them that indicate normal operating range. The ignition key switch is on the bottom under the gauges. Next to it is the engine start button, then the clutch in and clutch out button. The next two control switches select the speed for the main and whip line. The last control is a manual throttle control. You'll also find several electrical boxes in the cab along with a two-way radio. The controls we've just described are found on a national OS 435 crane. If you don't have one, your controls might be laid out differently, but they're all about the same for both hydraulic and electric cranes. Mechanical ones are a different ball game altogether. One thing you need to be familiar with right off is the crane's capabilities. Every crane has certain limits to what it can lift. There are several indicators and charts which will help you in figuring out what you can lift. The first is the boom indicator. It can be a basic mechanical type like this one or an electronic display panel like the new rigs have. What the boom indicator does is tell you what angle the boom is compared to the horizontal position. 
Why is it important to know this? Well, one of the rules for pedestal cranes says that the more vertical the boom angle, the more the crane can lift. This rule applies to the main block only. The whip line is rated for 15,000 pounds no matter what angle the boom is at. The amount the main block can lift depends on two things, the angle of the boom and how many lines you have reeved through the blocks. You must know both of these things before you can go about making heavy lifts. To find out how many lines you have reeved, just look at your main blocks. On this one, it's four. With that number in mind, take a look at your load chart. In the National, it's located on the top right-hand side of the controls. Your load chart will probably be laid out something like this. At the top will be the length of the boom, 120 feet. Then a row for the boom radius measured in feet. The next row is for boom angle measured in degrees. Then a row for whatever number of lines you're using, four, six, eight, or 10. Let's say you need to pick up an item about 55 feet away from you that weighs 60,000 pounds. Once you've got the radius, which is 55 feet, just read across to the row, which shows how many lines you've got. If you had six lines strung, you could lift 85,000 pounds. Remember the rule we mentioned, the more vertical the boom angle, the more the crane can lift. Here's an example. This boom is close to a horizontal position, 16 degrees, and it can lift just 25,000 pounds. As the boom is raised, its capacity increases to 40,000 pounds at 38 degrees, 85,000 at 65 degrees, and 160,000 at 78 degrees. You can easily see that the greatest lifting capacity of the crane can be used when the boom is at its most vertical point. The weight is concentrated along the vertical axis. There's a point here you need to be aware of. If you're using the maximum capability of the crane at a certain angle, if you boom down at all, you'll be overloaded. Both cranes on board are likely to have different length booms. Make sure that the right load chart is in place for the number of boom sections you have on that crane. So let's say you figured out how much the crane can lift at a certain angle. There's one more thing you need to know. How much does your load weigh? There are several ways you can go about checking. Chances are your watchstander or barge engineer will know. If it's coming off a supply boat, the captain of the boat should know. If it's something you lift a lot, like drill pipe, casing, or cement, ask an experienced hand. Be extra careful of closed containers. They can frequently be overloaded. After you've been working the crane a while, you'll get a kind of sixth sense about how much the load weighs. The most important thing we can tell a new operator, however, is that if you don't know the weight of a load, find out before you try to lift it. You want to make sure the load you lift isn't going to do a bending job on your boom or hurt someone. A lot of cranes have digital indicators which tell you the weight of the load, boom angle, and radius. They have alarms that will go off if you attempt to lift too much. These units are very convenient and easy to use. However, don't depend on them alone. They can get out of adjustment and give wrong readings. Make sure that you have figured out all the limits yourself using your charts. Another point, don't get in the habit of turning the alarm off. So far in this show, we've shown you the parts of the crane and described the controls, so you should have a basic understanding of how everything works. But you're not ready to get at those controls just yet. There are some basic safety practices you must follow whenever you work with a crane. They start with the people you're working with, the roustabouts. All the roustabouts working with the crane should have a thorough knowledge of how to sling a load. It doesn't matter how careful you are when operating the crane. If the load's not slung properly, you're in for trouble. If you see your roustabout slinging a load wrong, get out of the crane and go down and help them. Don't try to remedy the situation by yelling over the PA. 
Another thing the roustabouts must be familiar with is hand signals. Remember, you can't hear them with that engine five feet away from you. Their only method of communication is with their hands. Another point. As an operator, you must keep the signalman in view. If he ducks behind something, you're going to have a real problem knowing what to do with your load. Obey a stop signal from anyone working with the load. What we're saying here is to get to know your crew. Make sure they know their jobs. It's going to make yours easier. The crane is one of the most useful tools on the rig, but it can be easily abused. Some other safety measures you need to practice. Don't ever smoke in the cab. In fact, don't smoke anywhere outside the living quarters. Make sure there's a fire extinguisher in your cab and that it's recharged and ready to go. Before you actually make a lift, make sure your crane is operating properly. Get used to the sound of the engine and if it sounds abnormal, check it out. Make sure the controls are operating properly. Check out the various wire lines for wear. Check the brakes as well. Most of this will be a part of your pre-star checkout. There's a whole list of things you need to do daily before you operate your crane. For the national, you need to fill out a list like this. You'll do it when you first come on tour. Get into a regular habit of making those checks. The crane takes constant maintenance to keep it in top shape. Keep all the levels, including fuel, oil, water, and hydraulic fluid topped off. So you've checked everything out and you're ready to go. There's the load. How do you go about getting it where you want it? Well, in this show, we aren't going to try to tell you how to lift all the different types of loads you're going to find on the rig. That would take forever. Every load is different and takes different techniques to move it. As an operator, you'll get used to the way to properly lift a load with time. What we want to do now is give you some do's and don'ts that apply to whatever kind of load you're lifting. Number one is make sure your load is not still attached to the boat or platform. Sounds simple, right? It may be, but we've heard of several stories where inexperienced operators attempted to lift an attached load and parted their lines or even bent or cracked the boom. If you're lifting a load and the engine stalls, set the brake and release the clutch. This must be done manually. Go on back into the engine compartment and reset the clutch and then try to restart the engine. Don't ever let a load free fall. Always power your loads down. You want to be in full control of the load at all times. Don't use the crane to drag a load across the deck. This can overload the crane and cause the boom to twist. When preparing a load to be lifted, try to keep the load evenly spread out so that the tip of the boom will be directly over the center of mass of the load. Lift it a little to make sure it's balanced and well slung. If not, get the roustabouts to sling it right. When swinging the boom, don't break to a sudden stop. The load will continue to move and will jerk the boom while swinging around. Along the same lines, don't bring the boom to a sudden stop while lifting. Again, the load will continue to move and will cause the hoist line to jerk, which can damage it. Always keep your movements as smooth as possible. Treat your load with kid gloves. Anticipate the location of landing so the boom motion can be slowly decreased, thus limiting swinging action. Some things to remember when operating in rough weather are, the hook will tend to swing around a lot. Keep it in control so it doesn't slam into anything or anybody. Beware of high winds. If your load is light with a lot of exposed areas, it can react like a sail, which can put real stresses on the boom. Most rigs have a predetermined weather condition that will shut down the cranes. If the winds are 40 knots or more, don't even consider using the crane. If conditions look bad, tell the barge engineer, who will talk to the tool pusher. 
they will make the final decision. Remember, you are responsible for what happens when you're in the driver's seat, not anybody else. If someone's hurt with the crane, it's your fault. Three more don'ts that you should already know about. Don't lift the load over people. Don't ever let anyone ride on the hook or a load. And don't lift loads without tag lines. Those are some basic tips you need to know when operating the crane. It'd be a good idea to commit them to memory. Most of the time you'll spend with the crane will be in offloading and backloading boats. This can be tricky, especially in rough seas, because the supply boat is at the mercy of the sea. If not lifted right, you can cause damage to the boat, load, and crane. You'll need to use a safety line about 15 feet long so that the hook is kept well above the deckhand's head. You need to check that line every so often for wear. When attaching a load on a work boat, the first thing to do is give the deckhands plenty of slack to work with. Too little line, and when the boat drops in a swell, the line will go out of their reach. Once the load has been hooked, lift it carefully. Start your lift as the boat begins to rise with the swell. That way, when the boat reaches its highest point, you already have most of the weight of the load on the crane boom. If you get caught lifting on the fall, you'll encounter shock loading. We've seen cranes pulled off of their pedestals as a result of this. When bringing a load over to a boat, lower the load alongside the boat, not right on top of it. That way, if the load falls, it won't fall onto the boat. Then, position it so it's near the deck space it'll be landed on, but several feet higher than the boat's highest swell. Then, wait until conditions are right. Pick the right swell, and when the boat starts down, lower the load a little faster than the boat is lowering. As soon as you've got the load on the deck, let some slack out, so that if the boat moves or drops some more, the line won't go tight. As soon as the deckhands have released the hook and cleared the area, get your line out of the area as soon as possible. Here are some more tips on working with boats. Well, when you're offloading a boat and you go down to a boat, hook on, make sure the crew out of the way. Usually the crew doesn't give you signals. It's left entirely up to you. So if you've got four bridles going to a container, say, when you start to take the weight, if you, your two further slings tighten up first, then you're boomed too far up. You want to get your boom down. Vice versa, if the two slings nearest you tighten up first, you boom down too far. So you've got to square yourself up. Get ready to take your lift. Make, wait for the boat to come up on the highest part of the wave. Take the pick. Clear the boat and swing off the boat. Then start coming up to the rig. When you're going back down to the boat with a lift, go down and keep up away from the boat to the side of the boat until you're just above the deck level. Come on across the gunnel and place your lift but always watch out for the crew because they've got bad habits of going in between the lifts and you can't always see them. Don't pick until you are ready. When you're ready, you pick and keep going. Another job you're gonna have to do is lift people using the personnel basket. There are some tricks to it as well. First off, check the tag line to see if it's got any knots in it. If it does, untie them. Look at that tag line as well to see if it has a proper end on it. It shouldn't be worn and frayed. As for the basket, raise it only high enough to clear obstructions. Make slow and steady movements, being careful not to jerk the basket around. Hand luggage and small boxes only should go inside the net, not large and heavy items. Don't ever try to transport more than four people on the personnel basket. Make sure there's a life jacket for everyone and that they're properly worn. Make sure everyone has their baggage in the inside of the net and that the weight is evenly distributed. Make sure they all have their arms interlocked in the rope properly. The crew should arrive and depart from the helideck only. That way you can stay free of obstructions you might have other places on the deck. Remember, the guys you're lifting are valuable cargo, not some nameless equipment. An unsafe crane operator is a hazard to everyone. A guy like that's not only risking his own life, but that of his friends and co-workers. 
Most crane accidents are caused by unsafe or hurried operators. We'll tell you about one that left a man with some permanent injuries. I'd been working for Sedco for about a year when I was transferred to the Sedco 706. It was drilling in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, something happened there that uh, ended my career in the offshore. Uh, we were in the midst of a, preparing for a bad storm. Uh, we had about 75 mile an hour winds and probably 25 foot seas. Uh, we were working casing one night and uh, we had just finished. Uh, the crane operator uh, boomed the crane down over the pipe rack. He did not cradle the crane, and uh, he also didn't put the swing brake on. Um, I was uh, preparing to take the uh, casing protectors off. I turned around to pick up a pipe wrench, and uh, the headache ball caught me just about mid-chest. Uh, it hooked my coat, and I was all of a sudden about uh, 15 feet over the pipe rack. At that time, the crane continued to swing out to sea, and. Uh, Fortunately, it hooked uh, one of the pipe hooks, caught in something, and it stopped it. And what, when it did, it uh, catapulted me into the air. I landed, uh, I guess I was probably 20 feet above a P-tank. I landed on the P-tank. Then I bounced off the top of that and landed on the deck below. It was a fall of about 35 to 40 feet. Um, at that point, they uh, came down to see just what my injuries were, which was a broken pelvis and a broken arm. Well, as a, as a result of the injury, I was in the hospital in Anchorage for about 35 days, and I spent an additional two months in Chicago uh, in a body cast and um, about a year and a half in therapy er thereafter. And uh, even five years later today, I still can't run. And uh, uh, actually, uh, any, sitting for any prolonged period of time is somewhat painful. A lot of people think that uh, safety doesn't really apply to them and that uh, accidents won't happen to them. And uh, I can tell you that if that particular crane operator had uh, gone by the standard operating uh, procedures that Sedco lays out, that I would never have been injured that night and that I would probably still be working for Sedco today. Uh, in my mind, I, I know it was an accident, but... Uh, you still always uh, realize that it was a preventable one, and uh, I never forget that uh, the reason it happened was because someone uh, was lax in the way they uh, did their job. Let's review some basic safety rules that you should be concerned with. Stay alert, something we can't emphasize enough. You must be able to react quickly and control a load of several tons in an area of several inches. Don't become distracted from your work. Always keep your eye on the signal man. Don't operate the crane if you're sleepy or have taken medication. Know the weight of your load. If you're not sure, ask the barge engineer or watchstander. Your crane has definite limits. Be aware of them. Use your charts and indicators. Even if your rig contains a digital indicator which displays angles and weights, know how to use your manual ones. Remember, the higher the boom, the greater the load you can lift. The lower the boom, the less load. Watch out for the people you're working with. Don't let people ride on top of loads or hang onto hooks. Don't use the boom for a ladder or a walkway. Don't lift loads over people. Don't get into the habit of leaving the crane without racking the boom. The swing gear brake is not very strong and a gust of wind could move the boom and get it tangled in something, like the derrick. Handle loads carefully. Never exceed the recommended load charts. Before lifting, check that your load is balanced. Avoid sudden starts and stops. Don't leave the cab while a load is hanging. Don't forget that tagline. Watch for stop signals. Take your cue to hoist a load from a single guy who's acting as the signalman. However, obey a stop signal from anyone working with the load. Don't let the hook swing. Be careful with your hooks and blocks when they're empty. They might run into someone or something. The main and whip line can also tangle with each other if left swinging. Care for your lines correctly. 
don't allow them to kink or twist. Check the shivs routinely for cracks in proper size. Make sure the line is spooling properly in the drums. Don't wrap the lifting line around the load. Be aware of fires. Keep your cab extinguisher recharged and within reach. Be careful when refueling the crane. Don't smoke when in the crane. Keep the crane properly maintained. Many accidents are caused by a poorly maintained crane. Listen for odd sounds and unusual vibrations. Always follow manufacturer's guidelines for maintenance. These are 10 rules you need to pay attention to. They're basic for safe operations. We we'll list them one more time. Stay alert. Know the weight of your load. Know the limits of your crane. Watch out for your coworkers. Handle loads carefully. Watch for stop signals. Don't allow the hook to swing. Care for your lines. Be aware of fires. And keep your crane properly maintained. We hope we've given you a good start in this show. It's a lot to remember, but after a while, it'll come easy to you. Let your crane operator and tool pusher know what you've learned. The time will come when they'll give you a chance. And then, it's up to you. So good luck.